The biggest advantage I'd say of earth building is that earth is such a ubiquitous material. M most places that people are building, there's earth. And that's huge. That's a huge, huge factor. I think it's hard for people who are raised in an industrial society where energy is very, very cheap to understand the significance of that fact, because we're used to thinking nothing of moving all, you know, huge amounts of material, including very heavy material, very long distances. But traditionally throughout the history of of humanity, that has not been an option. And it's very possible that that will come to be less of an option in the in the near to middle future, even in wealthy places like the United States. So just learning to build with the stuff that is there on the site is an incredibly valuable thing for us at this, I'd say at this stage in our history to, to relearn that. There's a technical aspect to building with earth that makes it very accessible to lots of people. Some of the other tech, uh, even natural materials that are, that are commonly used, one that springs readily to mind is wood, require a little bit more training and technique to, to get good at. Carpentry is actually, as, as it's practiced, currently in uh, in the Western world is a very technical skill. It's, an, it's, a, it's a craft. So, and people take years to learn how to become good carpenters. Most of the earthen building techniques are so simple that people can learn how to do them in a matter of hours to days. So, and then we have lots of experience from Cobb Cottage Company in workshop teaching of people who took, say, a week-long workshop with very little to no previous building experience and went from that directly into building their own homes. Usually people require some help with the more technical aspects of the building, especially the carpentry, things like wiring and plumbing, if those are included into the home. Those are things that people don't, can't learn as quickly. But the actual earth building technique is so simple that most people can pick it up very quickly. One of the other big advantages that earth has as a building material is its weight. Because earth is a massive, heavy material, it has the ability to store heat or conversely to store coolness over a long period of time. A heavy earthen wall, and this also goes for other heavy materials like brick and stone, takes a long time for, to heat up and a long time to cool down. And it turns out that that's critical for efficient passive solar construction. If you want to build a house that is going to be heated mainly with the sun, you need a way to store the heat that's coming in from the sun during the daytime and keep it in the building to release during the nighttime, which is when you really need it. In the daytime, the sun's out, temperatures are high, everything's good. But at night, temperatures are going to drop. You're, gonna be a you're a lot more likely to be inside your house at night. And that's really when you need that heat. So the thermal mass of Earth either in your walls or in your floor, can hold and store that heat until you need it. And that's true not only on a daily cycle, where you have daily um, temperature swings, hot in the middle of the day, cool at night, but also over longer periods of time. So in the Pacific Northwest, Northern California up to BC, okay, and then have that slowly release to heat the building as you need it. Another way to do that, or another way to take advantage of that, of that thermal mass, is by having the mass of the cob or other earthen material in close proximity to a wood-burning heat source. I don't know if you can see that. 
right here in this picture. The wood stove right here is built right up against this surrounding cob hearth. So when the wood stove is going, it's releasing a lot of heat through radiation, some of which is projecting out into the room to warm us directly. I can feel a lot of heat coming off that stove right now to me. But in addition, a lot of that heat is going back and being absorbed into this cob wall and the cob is heating up. So what that means is in an hour, we can stop feeding the feeding the, the wood stove, the fire will go out, but then the cob will be continuing to heat the space. And that's the, the principle that's been, that principle has been used for, you know, millennia probably, particularly in really cold climates like uh, Scandinavia, where there's something called a, a, a Finnish stove. Germans had a similar technique called a cockleofen. Chinese had something called a kong. All of them are basically very, very heavy, massive wood burners in which you can make a very hot fire for a short period of time, heat up all that mass, and then have the heat from that mass continue to radiate and heat your space for a period of time afterwards. It's a much more efficient way of using the energy that's released by the combustion of the wood than of relying entirely on the heat that's, that's released at the time of combustion. So again, it's using the thermal mass of the earth as a battery to hold the heat for when you actually need it.